Did you finally get a chance to catch your breath after last week, Herb? Yeah, it's quieted down a little bit, but still, uh, you know, there's there's still plenty going on. Still a lot going on. Not as crazy as the beginning of free agency, but Eagles still in the news a little bit. We have some stuff to talk about today. This is the Eagle Eye podcast presented by Nissan, Ruben Frank, and Dave Zangara. How was your weekend, first off? My weekend was, uh, it seems so long ago. Uh, but yeah, my weekend was just fine. It was nice weather, got outside a little bit. Uh, but you know, the Eagles have a way of making sure there's news every day. So like there's never there's never a slow news day around Eagles world. So there's always something to talk about, something to write about, something to something to figure out with this team. Sunday was a slow day, right? Was it? I don't remember. It's all yeah. blur to me. They did sign a linebacker over the weekend. So we'll talk about that a little bit. Uh, we'll get into a fun little game in the second half of the show where we'll go through the best case scenario and the worst case scenario for each edition this year. And since the last podcast, we've heard from Kenny Pickett, Devontae Parker, Oren Burks, who they signed this weekend, and Devin White. But let's start with Hassan Reddick. Sound good? Sure. A report from Tuesday morning, the Eagles pushed back the $1 million bonus due to Reddick. Uh, presumably so they can have some more time to trade him. Now, this is whenever there's a, a change in a contract, both sides have to agree to it. But the newsy item here is that, yes, they are still looking to trade Hassan Reddick. And after the Josh Sweat news last week that he's back on a restructured deal, yeah, I mean, it makes sense that Reddick would be on the move. Yeah, it does. It's been... Gosh, five weeks since he the first word came out that he had permission or would however you want to phrase it, that that there was something going on there with the trade. Um, it's not easy. As, as good as he is, as productive as he's been, um, he's going to be 30 in September, and it's hard to trade older guys. And that's just the reality. Um, they don't have the value. Um, and, you know, he's looking for a lot of money, and there's he deserves it. But there's just not a lot of money there. A bunch of a bunch of free agents. There, there was a, a lot of really good free agent edge rushers, and teams would rather sign a guy than give up assets and then have to sign them. So it's a tricky situation. Um, the pushing the million dollars back two weeks is weird because you would think it would be easier to trade them if they paid that million than if they didn't pay it. Um, and like you said, with any contract, any change, no matter how minor, both sides have to agree with it. You basically are – it's a restructure, even though it's a small one. Um, why Hassan Reddick would agree to it, I'm not totally clear on. Um, it's a million dollars he doesn't get, and it kind of, um, I would think, will delay things here. I, I don't really I don't really understand exactly what both sides get out of this. Um we've learned not to really question how it was contract type stuff. Um, but look, it's been, it's been a while and I just don't know how this is going to get resolved. It's a, it's a weird situation. It's a different situation. And I'm not sure there's a real clear kind of path to both sides being happy. Yeah. And I, I think once we heard about the resolution with Josh sweat, at least relatively temporary for a year, He's going to be back. Like once we heard that resolution, I think everyone immediately thought, okay, well, what about Reddick? And I, I think it is fair to kind of presume that it's more likely Reddick gets traded after they figure it out with Sweat. Because if he's here, I mean, it's just a lot of a lot of mouths to feed in terms of the snaps. Yeah. And you brought B, you brought BG back. You still have Nolan Smith. You just drafted him in the first round last year. Um, you, you brought in a couple guys who might make the team and, and play some edge, but you really have three, you know, big ticket guys plus BG and Owen Smith. So I, I just don't think that's a tenable situation. Now, how we could make it work financially, but I don't think I don't think Hassan Reddick is going to want to. He's certainly not going to want to play for fourteen million dollars. Um, you know, he's fourth in the NFL in sacks over the two years with the Eagles, and he's I think what is he twenty. 23rd in average annual salary or something like that. So it's not a it's not a fair and equitable situation right now. And the Eagles understand that, but um, they've moved on. I mean, when they signed Huff and and restructured Sweat, I mean, I, I don't know how you can 
you can't really keep Hassan Reddick after that. Maybe they can, but I, I just think it's very unlikely. I will point out there have been some instances where we thought a trade was going to happen. I think back to the Zach Ertz one, right? Like everyone thought Ertz was going to be gone. He kind of wants to be gone. And then it doesn't happen. And then they hold on to him until the trade deadline. Is it possible something like that happens again? Because it would make sense that you get a, a greater return for a player at the deadline when teams are trying to like go for it. We've seen there be, and I don't know like what his return would be right now based on seeing what, like I thought Brian Burns would cost a, an awful lot and he didn't. There clearly wasn't a, a, a huge trade market for Josh Sweat where the Eagles would have done that. I, I You know, I think Reddick has less trade value than both of those guys. Yeah, I would agree with that. So um, if, if the Eagles don't buy that Reddick would like sit out, would they hold on to him? I guess it's a look, the last thing you want is is a guy that's not happy and look he's a pro but he wears his heart on his sleeve and uh, I, I just think it's not ideal to bring him back when he's clearly underpaid and they don't have any intention of of you know resolving that with any kind of pay bump uh, maybe they can throw a couple million bucks his way to, to keep him happy until then. I think Zach Ertz was a pro about it. We all knew he was miserable. He was unhappy. He didn't want to be here. Uh, but they made it work. Um, we don't talk about the blonde hair enough. That was one of the funnier things he's ever I've ever seen. That was. <laughs> like a teenager dyeing his hair and in protest. Yeah, that's exactly what it was. Um, and then Kelsey made the bet with them. That he'd be, and then he was back. So Kelsey had to dye his hair. Right. Yeah. So can he, I guess you could bring him back. Um, you know, he's going to, he, you know, then he, he sits out training camp or threatens to set out training camp. Um, and there's a point where you can't sit out anymore because it's going to cost you real money. Um, he would come back. He wouldn't have had camp. Who knows what kind of shape he's in. It's just those things never go well. You know, and uh, it, it's not what you want, but it, it might come to that. There, that might be the the only resolution because I, I don't know what else is going to happen at this point. Yeah, and from the Eagles' perspective, you don't want to give the guy away. He's a valuable player. He might have been your best defensive player over the last few years. Yeah, yeah, certainly in that conversation. Um, but it might come to that too, and you know what's worth it to to get back um, just to avoid the situation that you might have if he if you bring him back. Um, how badly do you want to get rid of him? I I don't think he'd be like a to level problem. I just don't see him doing that. But um, you don't. You just don't want for a guy like Nick that's always talking about you know culture and all that. You don't want a disgruntled guy in your locker room, especially one who's one of your better players, and is is you know I'm not sure he's a huge leader type guy, but he's got a lot of influence in that locker room, and he's a guy that speaks his mind. And it's just it, it could get messy. It, it really could get messy. And I think that, I don't think either side wants that to happen. Yeah. It's just a little tricky to figure out the outcome. I mean, maybe you you hold on on them until the draft, and then a team that kind of strikes out getting that player and filling the roster there would be more willing to part with assets. It's possible. Um, that might be the that might they might have no choice. Yeah, or like you know you trade them on draft day. That's like you know big deadlines, and and in a way the draft kind of is a deadline. Sometimes it spurs some action. That's true. Um, I, I just I, if a team really really wanted them, they'd have them by now. Mm -hmm. um, now, as his price comes oh, down, yeah. or the the price the, the the cost to get him comes down, maybe all of a sudden teams will want him a lot more. I, mean, I look, I still think he's a really good player, a really good edge rusher. Um, he's relentless. I mean, he's. Look, he's got 27 sacks, I guess, the last two years. What, 16 and 11? Plus three and a half more in the playoffs in, in 22. It's a really good pass rusher. Um, I'd certainly I'd certainly take him if I was out there looking for an edge. But 
Um, nothing's happened yet. What do you think is the bigger holdup to a trade? Is it the trade compensation coming to the Eagles, or is it him basically agreeing to a new contract with what whatever team would trade for him? It's a great question. I I, I don't know. Um, I think there'd be a team willing to pay for him because I think if he was a free agent, he would have gotten a deal commensurate with the other edge rushers. But I, I, it's probably the compensation. It's probably the, the the picks. I would guess. Yeah, and it might be a combination because you have to have them both line up, and that's right. what makes this deal a little trickier. Because it's not you're not just you know at least like at, you're making a trade at the deadline. You know what you're getting. You're getting a rental player or a player with X amount of years left on their deal. You kind of know exactly what it is. With this, you have to figure out what it is. And the whole reason he's being traded in the first place or might be traded in the first place is because he's not happy with his current contract. Right. Right. So now there have been times where a guy is unhappy with his contract and is willing to go somewhere else with the same contract and be happy uh, because that's not the team that disrespected him or whatever. But, um, yeah, it's – it's a unique situation. It really is. And he really is underpaid. And when he signed that deal, what was it? 45 million over three, mm -hmm. I think, um, two years ago, it was a good deal, but the way, the way, you know, salaries have gone up, especially at that, a couple positions, sometimes positions just get hot and people spend more and they, they go up at a higher rate than the cap. And that seems to have happened with edge rushers. I mean, even when they signed him, he, it wasn't in line with his production. It was yeah, it wasn't. But he he didn't have the body he didn't have the body work that he has now either. He's, now he's got four sure. straight double digit sack seasons. And it appears like the league still kind of views him the same way, which is surprising to me a little bit. Yeah, and sometimes guys, you know, they get a reputation, and you know, he bounced around to three teams in three years, and uh, yeah, maybe maybe teams view him differently than than we do. But man, I just think he's a really good player. Yeah. Any chance the Eagles would? Like obviously a big part of this when we say he requested uh, the upper to like with the trade to, to seek a trade, it's basically like figure out what your value is. And it, there's a very real chance his value on the open market is not what they expected it to be. Would would the Eagles consider still trying to pull off an extension with him? I, I know it would be a crowded room this year, but you only found a resolution with Sweat for one more season. We don't know what Nolan Smith is. I think there are questions about how Bryce Huff will handle handle a starter's role, even though you paid him all this money. And and Reddick is a proven commodity. Would you entertain that still? It's a lot of money at that position and a lot of bodies at that position. And I still think it makes more sense to if you can have one of these guys long term, it makes more sense that it's sweat just because he's he's younger. Um you're committed to Huff probably for two years. You're committed to Nolan just because he's a I mean, not contract wise, but just first round pick wise. Um, it's an interesting question. It, I guess it's possible, um, but I just don't. I just don't know if um, if that's the way out of this. I kind of. I kind of guess. I'm kind of thinking it's probably not. Uh, but, you know, Howie is very creative with these type of things. And he, he tends to he tends to get really creative in finding solutions and finding ways out of difficult situations. And he's gotten a lot better at that. Um, so I, I guess it's in play. OK, that's all we have on that. Right. Anything else you want to add? No, it's I'm really curious to see how it gets resolved. And, um, you know, it's going to be an, an interesting to, to follow. Yeah, it should be. It's still like the one thing kind of hovering over this team right now. Yeah, yeah. We met Devin White today and Oren Burks. Let's start with Oren Burks because that was kind of the newsy item from the weekend. Have you ever met an Oren before? Well, there's Oren Hatch. I've never met him. Okay. Um, Oren Chiglad. No, um, I don't think I've met uh, an Oren. I met an Oren today. Yeah. How'd you feel about that? And Orrin Hatch is spelled differently. Orrin Hatch is O R R I N. This is O R E N. It's still an Orrin. It's still an Orrin. Yeah. Yeah. Spelled differently. 
Yeah, it is spelled differently, but I've never <laughs> met Orrin Hatch, so it doesn't, it's really irrelevant. Yeah. Um, What'd yeah. you make of the signing? It's it's an interesting one. Again, it's, it's you know, um, if you watch the Super Bowl, you're like, do you really want this guy here? Um, a dif- difficult situation coming in, you know, in the middle of the game for a guy who got hurt who's an all-pro. Um you know, we'll see. I, I'm. I I don't I don't know what to make of the signing. Uh, I don't know how good he is. Um, if he's a if he's a. You know, backup and a special teamer and helping out here and there, I'm okay with it. But he, you know, if if they ask more than that, I'm not sure he's up for that task. Yeah, it, I mean, he turns 29 in a couple of days. So happy birthday, Orn! But. Uh, you don't normally see a guy who's 29 like all of a sudden become a full-time starter. He did play more on defense last year than any other year in his career. And the guy before him who was in that role was Aziz Alshire, who ended up going on to Tennessee younger, obviously, but ended up going to Tennessee, became a starter, got paid this offseason. So maybe there's something there, but he's really been a part-time defensive player, special teamer in his in his career. Yeah, and... You know, we'll see. He'll, I think, I, I, it'll be interesting to see after the draft what they have at off at, at, at linebacker and kind of how it all stacks up and who's going to be where and what they all look like in camp. Um, you know, it seems like it's like let's just get some bodies in here and see what works. Um, it's a little bit scary, but uh, we'll see. I mean, that's not much of a departure from what they've done recently, and at least Devin White is a. Like we can argue about the player and the fit, but at least it was some sort of investment, a mid-level investment in the position. Yeah, and we still don't have the real numbers on him, do we? Have you seen real numbers yet? Uh, not that I've seen, but we can presume it's at least like a legitimate contract. Yeah, yeah. My my theory, and I, I might have shared this before, is that you take whatever is first reported and multiply it by 0. 0.6, and you get what the contract probably is. That's my. It's usually pretty close to that, but we'll see. I mean, we'll find out. But either way, it's – yeah, it's – look, it's not minimum wage. It's somewhere above minimum wage. Um, but uh, are, are we talking about him yet? Or are we still on uh, Orrin Hatch? I don't have much on Orrin Hatch. Yeah. He was a politician. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you just looked up how to spell his name, so you should have his bio in front of you. Yeah, I mean, I, I exited out pretty quick once I got there. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel um, I feel like I should know exactly. A what senator he from Utah from seventy seven to twenty nineteen. Yeah, he just died in April of twenty two at eighty eight. Longest serving Republican um, senator in history. Hmm. Uh, although he was uh, then surpassed by Chuck Grassley. I heard he had a real famous belt. A real famous belt. Yeah, or Orin's belt. It's Orion's belt. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know, this is like let's let's just stick to the topic and keep this short because Danny Palmelis has a Sixers podcast in forty one minutes. But no, we're talking about Orion's belt now. Uh, we talked to both of the linebackers. I asked Warren Burks, or <laughs> what's this guy's name, Warren Burks about. Uh, just like kind of his career arc because he was a third round pick and he's been in the league now, but he's never really taken hold of a job. I thought he had a, a unique perspective on it. Uh, kind of wants to put it all in the perspective. And uh, I, I think what he is is kind of what he is. Most likely Mo- very rarely. Now, sometimes guys reinvent themselves late in their career. We've seen it happen. Can't think of any t- <laughs> many times at this point, but uh, yeah, it's um, you are who you are, and it was look. He's a good. He seems like a good guy, but that Super Bowl, um, he was in so far over his head. And look, he was playing one of the best offenses ever assembled, um, or at least one of the best quarterbacks ever assembled. Uh, but uh, he had a rough time out there. Now, does that mean he can't help this team? No, but uh, it's just hard to imagine him being an impact guy. On, on defense sure but you need depth there too sure. because we heck we saw that last year and i think maybe you'd feel better about him being the depth than some 
undrafted rookie that's kind of in over their head. Maybe, maybe not. Depends who that undrafted rookie is. Sure. It's TJ Edwards. Take TJ. If it's Ben Van Sumeren. Well, you, I mean, TJ in year one was not TJ in year three. I'll take Ben Van Sumeren. Would you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think at least he, he's got a chance to have some upside. TJ started some games as rookie year, didn't he? Yeah, he started four games. He did, yeah. Um, but, yeah. I mean, we'll see. Look, I'm not going to rule out the fact that he could help. But my, my best guess is that he won't. Yeah. But, I mean, help them on defense, we're saying. Yeah. Because I do think he'll make the team. He'll be a big special teams contributor. And um, maybe if they rotate at linebacker a little bit, I could see him getting some burn. We could see. We could see that. But I think special teams will be his role if he's on the team. Yeah. I mean, heck, he played in the 49ers defense last year. He did. And that's a pretty good defense. So, and a team that cares about linebacker. It's true. Let's get to Devin White. Yeah. It was good talking to him. Had to yeah. wait a while for him on uh, on Tuesday afternoon, but I liked his perspective. He admitted that last year was not the type of tape he wanted to put out. I, I think he almost admitted that everything going around was a little bit of a distraction to him. Coming back on that fifth-year option, he talked about wanting the long-term deal, and it didn't work out. Yeah. But then he got hurt. He yeah. said he actually got hurt in the Eagles game, which yeah. is a little ironic. Isn't it ironic? Yeah, I, I really liked his honesty. He was really upfront about his issues. And, um, you know, yeah, like uh, Orion's belt never – like he was asked about the Super Bowl. And I think – you did you ask him about it? No. Uh, you might have followed up on it. But, um, you know, he was just – you know, it's a great opportunity to play in that kind of game at that level. And, you know, he didn't he didn't say, look, I was terrible. I, I, I guess it's not fair to expect him to say that. But then you get – Devin White and he was very accountable and he's like look you know last year just that wasn't me and he talked about everything going on and um, I like to hear that at least he has an understanding that it wasn't good enough and he's got to be better and you know a fresh start could help him I like what I heard from him I I thought he was very honest and very uh, very open he's he's a very confident guy Um, so I feel like I feel better about him now than I did before we talked to him if, if that makes sense that really shouldn't affect it but I like this a dangerous place to be. It is. It is. But I, I liked what I heard. I, I liked like if I'm a coach and I hear that, I'm like, okay, maybe we'll be okay here. Um, look, this guy's been a pro bowler. So um and and he was, you know, he did say he got off to a good start last year, which is true. And then everything just kind of fell fell apart. Uh, but he was playing really well at the start of the season uh until he got hurt. So I mean, he's going to be out there. He's going to be um, most likely. I mean, he talked about the green dot and how he, he had, did he say through his whole career through last year, he's still wearing yeah. it. Um, so I will say, um, I think there's a chance he'll be okay. But I, it's, I mean, it's been a really disappointing career and uh, fifth round, fifth round, fifth pick. In the first round, uh, you expect a lot more. Um, so we'll see. He's at the point of his career where he could he could bounce back. He could be a really good player for this team. Yeah, he's but, still just 26. Still 26. Um, but after talking to him, I'm I'm at least at least I, I like his I like his upfront uh, upfrontedness, whatever. I like how upfront he was and and just understanding where he is in his career and how much better he has to be gives me the confidence that he'll, you know, make a honest, determined effort to get there. And, and and we'll see what that looks like. Yeah. He talked about being uh, kind of excited to be on a one-year deal, which, you know, I I don't think that was the goal ever. Certainly like when, when he's entering on that fifth, fifth year option last year, the goal was not to end up somewhere on a one-year deal but I, I think sometimes guys do use it as some motivation and it's a factor to help them play better sure. on that one-year deal. So but look we'll at see. DeAndre Swift gets a one-year deal, makes a pro ball, parlays it into a, a nice contract. So Yeah, I mean, a little different because he was finishing up a contract. Yeah, but the, the contract year. But yeah. Sure. Um, it, it brings out the best of people. So, yeah. Um, what, what did you think of his presentation? Yeah, I, I liked everything he said. It doesn't really change my opinion on the player. 
uh, I don't, I don't know if it was the best fit when like you looked at the linebackers who were available this off season. But then again, like I think the linebackers that I would have signed went for more money than I was expecting. Sure. So I kind of understand. And it was like, you know, late in the first week of free agency and you get a guy like Devin white, there's at least some upside. He's 26 years old, super athletic, you know, was a high draft pick. Not that long ago. Like I understand it's a swing. Like it's, I think there's a, it's a big swing, right? Like I, I think you can miss and he's not going to be a great player, but there's upside here. Yeah, no, no question about it. I also think he just left a defense that to me seemed better suited to his strengths than the one he's about to enter. Like, you know, you think about Todd Bowles and he's letting his linebackers blitz. They're getting after it. And that's, I mean, Devin White can do that. that. I mean, he he's he can be a dynamic blitzing linebacker. And like, we don't think we're going to see a ton of that from Vic Fangio. But look, I I understand why they made the move. Yeah, and Vic might, you know, look at what he has. I mean, I, I'm thinking that anybody the Eagles sign on defense has has Vic's, you know, thumbs up, has, has Vic's approval. I mean, it's going through Vic. We know he's got quite a voice in that building. So, Although they didn't bring any of his former players. Well, that might have been intentional. <laughs> but – I, yeah, well, you know, but I, I think that um, Vic understands what what Devin White's good at, and I would expect him to put him in those positions. We'll see. And the other part of this we haven't talked about, and we both agreed that like they can't make or not make moves at linebacker because of Nicobe Dean. But I think right now Nicobe still would be a starter. You would have Devin White and Nicobe Dean, and based on. Devin White's career, you would think he'd be the Mike and you'd have Nicobe changing positions. Something to think about. Yeah, and Nicobe might be better suited. It might, it might benefit him. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. Um, he's going to be one of the more intriguing guys in camp, Nicobe, certainly. What? Are you, where are you on Nicobe? Um... I'm I'm skeptical that he'll pan out, that he'll be a above average or even an average every day, you know, every down starter or, or you know regular. Um, just haven't seen it. He hasn't been healthy, so he hasn't really played that much healthy. But I mean, I expected to see a guy who was all over the field making plays, and he's all over the field. He's just not making plays. Um, so it was kind of frustrating to watch him. But again, he's a young guy. He's still only, what is he, 22? He's 20, 23. He's a young guy. He hasn't played much. I haven't given up on him. Um, I know he's putting in the work, uh, but I just haven't seen it. Yeah, look, I, I'm i kind of with you. The word skeptical is good because it's not super strong. Because I'm not super strong on it. Like, he didn't get to play at all as a rookie, which raised a little bit of a – a, like an eyebrow like why isn't he getting any playing time but in fairness you had players in front of him playing at a high level for most of the yeah, season Super Bowl run it was like are we really gonna yeah. put a rookie in here and then last year I like I I don't want to say you can chalk all of it up to the injury but a lot of it you probably can because even when he was out there I don't think he was healthy but then you question like well is he going to be healthy coming back from those injuries yeah, and he told me, I talked to him at Locker Clean Out Day, and he he said he was never, I mean, I think he played like one and a half healthy games last year. He got hurt twice. He said when he came back, he wasn't healthy, but I think he had, uh, he was really confident he'd be, he was, you know, I think he was three weeks from getting out of the boot, and that was in January. So um, he has no excuses. I mean, he's, he's going to be healthy, and he's going to get the opportunity, and I don't know how many more chances he'll get because he's a, a third round pick on into year three and it's time to do something. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about Kenny Pickett a little bit. We had a chance to talk to him this week. I, I, we, we were walking out of the auditorium. Like I kind of really liked what he just said. He didn't back down from the way he handled things in Pittsburgh. And he kind of put it on them because on his way out of town, it, there was a pretty concerted effort to, th there was some in public back and forth thing going on. <laughs> 
Yeah, it was a pretty clear smear campaign. When you have like 12 beat writers tweet out the same thing at the same moment, like the same instant about what a jerk this guy is and how, you know, the same specific things that about the the refusing to suit up for that Seattle game uh, as the third quarterback and uh, how he handled the Russell Wilson stuff. You had the same thing from everybody. That tells you that there's a organized smear campaign against the kid. I'm not saying... Um, you know, I mean, I wasn't there. We don't cover the Steelers, but I like the fact that he said, look, I handled it the right way. And he basically said, you know, they can say what they want, um, but I handled it the right way. And I like that. I like that he, like you said, he didn't back down. Um, that's a lot when you have that going on. You have people ganging up on you like that and um, trying to make you look bad. Um, the Steelers, look, they – they drafted him 20th or they blew the first round pick. Um, they don't, you know, they, they don't look good. So they're trying to save, look, I'm not saying specifically who the, that, that smear campaign came from, but the Steelers have a reason to try to make themselves look better. Like, well, we're getting rid of him because, you know, um, he, you know, he was, he was a bad guy. Uh, not because he couldn't play. I don't know. Uh, not defending him, and I don't think he's very good. Um, but and it also doesn't mean that it's untrue. <laughs> it also doesn't mean it's untrue, but I just didn't like the way it was handled. Um, and I thought he handled yesterday, was it yesterday, whenever it was? I thought he handled it well. And um, he's you know, still a young kid. Um, and to have that, I mean, he was able to kind of defend himself without, um, without being super negative against the Steelers. So um, he just said, I handled it the right way. And um, I, he said, I feel really comfortable in that fact that I did the right thing throughout this. Um, it's, it's interesting. And I guess I, I just tend to naturally take the player's side on these type of things. You know, you just, you just do. It's just, I don't know, but uh, maybe more will come out on it. Um, I'm sure there are things that he did that probably weren't, and he's, you know, he talked about how he was coming off ankle surgery before that Seattle game. And he said, it was understood what my role was going to be. Uh, so it made, he made it sound like they were kind of making up stuff about how he handled everything. And he, he wasn't going to let him do it. And I like that. Yeah. It, it's tough to kind of parse through what actually happened, but I did like that. He stood his ground. That said, I want to talk a little bit about the actual player the Eagles are getting and why they made the move. Because since like, we did talk about Kenny Pickett already, but since that trade, the Steelers got themselves a different backup quarterback and one that I think Eagles fans were very interested in, in Justin Fields. So let me go through the terms of these trades, right? The Eagles got Kenny Pickett and a fourth round pick, number 120, for number 98, which is a third round pick and the Eagles' highest two seventh-rounders in 2025. All that comes out to basically like a fifth-round-ish value for, for Kenny Pickett. And then the Bears, for Justin Fields, they get a 2025th uh, sixth-rounder that can become a fourth-rounder if he plays 51% of the snaps. So theoretically, Justin Fields didn't bring as much as Kenny Pickett. Yeah. Which surprises me. A little bit, because I think Justin Fields is a better player than Kenny Pickett. If you had to just, if, if both situations were equal and you said, which guy do you want to be your backup quarterback? I'd take the better player. Yeah. But I, I also think the contract plays a role here. Justin Fields has one year left on his rookie contract and then the fifth year option, which I mean, the Steelers aren't going to pick that up. I would, I would, nobody is. Yeah. yeah no one's, no one's going to pick that up. And then, uh, you, with Kenny Pickett, you get two years of really cheap backup quarterback play. Yeah. And I think that's important. I think, and I like just Justin Fields. Um, I, I think he, yeah, if you had one game to win, you'd rather have Justin Fields start it than Kenny Pickett. But I think to have a guy for two years um, and, let him kind of learn the offense. And I mean, you, you know, what's important in a backup is 
Um, you want a guy who's smart and a guy who knows what he's doing and isn't going to make mistakes. And Kenny Pickett doesn't make a lot of mistakes. He's got a really, really good, you know, barely thrown in interception. So not a great quarterback, but he might be a better, a better fit than at the end of this year. Now you're looking for another backup um, because you, you're not going to keep Justin Fields. Um, I, I, I also, and, and we talked about this before, like, you know, is, is Justin, would Justin Fields be more of a threat to Jalen? And I, I don't think so. I, I don't think Jalen's worried about that. I think he's pretty secure in, in, in where he is. Um, would the Eagles but, worry about that? After 2016, uh, or, I, you know, not 2016, but 2020, um, the guy they drafted in 2016, um, possibly. But, I mean, that's using a second-round pick on a rookie quarterback versus using it's a, a six-round pick. Yeah. Huge difference, and that's why this doesn't – it wouldn't have bothered me. I, I would have been okay if they went out and, and got Justin Fields. Um, like I said, I think he's a little bit better. I think one thing, Jalen's been banged up, and he's proven he's going to play – most of the games for you. So, um, you know, if, if I had a quarterback who's going to miss eight games or 10 games, I'd probably rather have Justin Fields. If I had a quarterback who's going to miss a half and then your starter would be back in there, I'd probably rather have Kenny Pickett. Huh? I think I'd still rather have Justin Fields, but look, I mean, the league kind of has told you what they, how they view both of these quarterbacks. Does that surprise you though, that Justin Fields is kind of looked at, like, I mean, yeah, I know, yeah, I I think there's something there. Yeah, I do too. But um, I mean, clearly the NFL doesn't. He was yeah. just available for a six round pick. Yeah, it's yeah, it's kind of. It surprising. does bring up a fun philosophical question, like what you want in your backup quarterback. Do you want a right. guy who is just going to take the easy play, not put the ball in harm's way, or do you want? a guy like Justin Fields, who's kind of a higher variance player. I think that's what I was alluding to. And I probably didn't articulate it well enough because you got that quizzical look on your face. Uh, I think that's, I think, I think Pickett would be a safer guy. Who's not going to, he's not going to light it up. He's not going to have a, a huge game, but he probably won't get you beat either. Um, he'll put up 20 points, um, you know, 17 to 23 points where Justin Fields could have put up 38 or could put up three. Um, and I guess Kenny Pickett's had games where he's put up three as well, but I just, like, yeah, I think a few that, times. yeah, but I think, but also he had Matt Canada as his, as yeah. his OC. I think both these quarterbacks have been in pretty bad situations at different, you know, for, for chunks of their careers, their short careers. But, um, yeah, I, I, I think that's why I think Pickett's just a, maybe a safer guy where, um, I think Fields is going to have a better career. I think he'll, you know, he'll be, I, I would expect him to be a starter somewhere. I think he's better than. Do you though? At some point. How old is Justin Fields? 26? He's still pretty young, but I mean, you would think it would have happened this year. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, I think he'll. I, he's I only he'll, 25. He just turned 25 this he'll, month. He'll be a starter again. I, I'm, I'm sure of it. I don't know. Uh, I don't know where, but. Um, Obviously, I don't know where, but I think he will. Where where Pickett, I, I don't think he'll. I don't think he'll ever be like an opening day starter for a team. Mm -hmm. Okay, but I still think it, it it makes sense to have him as a backup. Just, um, he, you know, he's. We were having this conversation. I think walking down to the interview room yesterday, Mariota versus Pickett. Like I think Mariota is probably a little bit better, but Pickett at minimum wage versus Mariota at five or six billion. As much as you would project Pickett to play, uh, I think it makes sense. Yeah, and I, I, I really do think two years is a huge part of that from yeah. from the Eagles perspective. I do too. And then and then you ask yourself like And we don't even know, like, I mean, they pres like, we heard they checked in on Justin Fields. If you had the opportunity to do one of these two deals, which one would you have done? I would have done Fields. I would have too. That would have been worth it to me. Yeah. Now, I don't know if they could have done exactly. I, I don't think they have a four right. next year or a six. Yeah, but they could have figured, you can figure it out. out. Yeah, kind of equivalent, you know, equivalent picks. But um, I'm okay with, with Pickett as, as a two. And then, you know, look, Tanner McKee's still there. 
Um, is there any chance he beats out Pickett for the number two job? Probably not this year. Probably not. I think they made the move for a reason. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And you made the point the other day that like as as good as Tanner McKee looked in camp, like we didn't see him every day at practice. We're not in there. We're not out there for practice. Mm-hmm. We're out there for warm ups. Um, so they know they know more than we do about them. And uh, yeah, so uh, interesting scenario. But yeah, I do think Justin Fields will be a starter somewhere next year. All right, good. Let's take a break, and then we'll come back and we'll look at the best and worst case scenarios with all the Eagles additions this offseason. You deserve a car that thrills you, a car that puts goosebumps on your goosebumps. At Nissan, we got everything from turbocharged SUVs to 100% electric vehicles that will make your heart beat faster. Experience the thrill for yourself and shop your local Nissan store at NissanUSA.com today. Celebrity cook Steve Martorano brings his Italian-American cooking back home to Philly. Enjoy Martorano's Prime at Rivers Casino and Steve's famous meatballs with Sunday gravy, prime steaks, and more. Make reservations at Martorano's Prime on Open Table. All right, Rube, I have in front of me the list of Eagles additions this offseason, really in the last few weeks, so we're not going back to the futures, guys, but in free agency, the guys they've added – I want to go through the best case scenario and the worst case scenario with these signings. And this is, you know, within the the spirit of the rules, we're not saying like season ending injury for these guys is the worst case scenario. You know what I mean? Who would would say that? I'm just, I want to get the the rules out there first. You're a big rules guy. I know you're a big rules guy. Uh, Let's start with Saquon Barkley, uh, the biggest name addition to you. What's the best case scenario? I think the best case scenario is he comes close to what he did in, in 2022, um, which is his last big year, you know, 1200 rushing yards, 40 or 50 catches um, and seven or eight touchdowns. Yeah. I mean, I, I think the best case scenario is he's one of the best running backs in the league and he's, he's has the kind of impact that Christian McCaffrey's had on the 49ers offense. I I don't think, yeah, I don't think that's r- very likely that he can make that kind of impact. I just don't. I just don't think he's as good. Um, but best case scenario, sure. Yeah, and I, I think that's like the ultimate hope. I don't know if the numbers would wow, like because there's there's we know the old there's one football and there's a lot of good skill players here, but I think he really could have a huge impact if he if he looks like the Saquon of old teams are going to have to worry about game planning for him. Whereas like last year, DeAndre Swift was good, but I don't think defensive coordinators went into each week circling number zero and saying, we got to stop this guy. I I think it was a lot of 11 and and six on their, on their defensive sheets. Well, if you're circling a zero, I mean, zero is already a circle. (laughs) So you'd have two circles. It would kind of be difficult to, um, uh, you had to count for him, certainly for Swift. I mean, he had a better year than Saquon did. So, you know, but Saquon's had two better years than Swift has ever had. And he's better. He has been better at times. He's a better football player than DeAndre we'll Swift. We'll see. Are you really not convinced of that? I'm not. At this point in his career, I'm not convinced of that. I mean, wow. Okay. He's averaged under four yards a carry, what, three of his last, two of his last three years. I sent you a stat that you ignored about his. Um, I mean, if I responded to every stat you sent me, I would get nothing done. <laughs> you respond to three out of every 17 stats I send you. Um, let me see if I can find this. Saquon Barkley had 14 offensive plays of at least 40 yards in his first 29 games. And he has six in his last 47 games. I, I just I look at the player he is. And look, I'm not saying it won't work out. I just think there's a, a pretty fair chance that he's not an elite player anymore. Okay, well, let's go to the, the worst case scenario within reason. I guess that would be it, that he's simply not a special player. Like he'll be okay. He'll yeah. average. Like I I don't think it's gonna completely bottom out where he's a a player you just can't use. I think the worst case scenario is he's just not 
he he's he's a jag, right? He's just a guy. And and that would be bad because you're paying him to be an elite player. Yeah, I, I think that's fair. And I think, you know, like like that's what last year looked like. Now he was hurt. He was playing for a bad team. He had a bad O line. He was playing on a bad field. Um, so I think there's there's reason to think that he could be a lot better this year. Um, but I think the worst case scenario is, you know, you, you look up and he's at like 3.8, 3.9 yards of carry. And, um, you know, he's okay. He has some really good games, but um, ultimately isn't what you were expecting. I think that's the worst case scenario. Yeah. All right. How about Bryce Huff? We'll start with the best case. Yeah. I mean, if the best case to me is that he – he grows from the player he was last year when he had a breakthrough season and um, shows that it wasn't a fluke and even builds on it a little more. Um, he's going to have other really good pass rushers around him, even though we don't know exactly who they are. And he, he did last year as well. Uh, but, um, you know, I don't, I, you know, 12, 13 sacks for a guy who had 10 and is projected to play more. Um, I think that's, within within the realm of possibility. Yeah, and I think a big part of his best case scenario is that he looks like the same player playing 480 snaps as he does playing 700. Exactly. Exactly. Um or yeah, 700 as he did as a 480 guy. Yeah. Um you know, some guys can do that. Some guys can um you know, and again with him it's he ha- it's it just he wasn't bad in his earlier years. He just wasn't getting the opportunities. I mean, he did play a lot in 2022. Um, he just didn't get the sacks, but the the numbers were encouraging. Um, I think he's going to be pretty good. And I think, yeah, I think um, if his snaps go up, say, what are you, how many snaps did he average a game last year? Like, um, Well, last year was his highest total. He played 480. But he had a higher percentage the year before, right? In no, in 21, he did. In 21, he played 51 percent, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I, I think if you give him another, you know, 15 snaps a game, you know, what's that that for the year? You know, a couple hundred, then um, I, I think he could parlay that into into bigger production. How about worst case scenario? Worst case is that you have what he was most of his career, um, that he can't handle the additional workload that is too much for him. Um, and that the production is just not there. Um, you know, he's had one season with four more sacks. So you look up at the end of the year and he's sitting there with three sacks and you're like, what do we just do here? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's fair that he can't handle a bigger workload and he's a part-time player. That would be the biggest fear with him. Yeah. How about uh, CJ Gardner Johnson? Best case scenario. Best case scenario is a first team all pro. Uh, he's just one of the better safeties in the league. Um, it's based on production, and the ball's got to come his way. And he's got to make those plays, but um, we've seen him do it before. Um, look, I don't know if he's going to have six sacks again or six interceptions again, but um, I just think he's potentially um, one of the top safeties in the league. Yeah, I think that's it. Like, impact plays, he's making them, and he brings that swagger to the defense. All of his personality is a positive. I think that's part of the best case scenario. Uh, and he stays healthy, which I know we've said we're not going to end like season ending injuries, but he has had these cumulative injuries over his career. If he can avoid that, obviously a, a bonus. Yeah. Worst case. Worst case, he wants to trade by week four. <laughs> <laughs> because with CJ, who knows? No. Um, yeah, I think the worst case is like what happened with Detroit, you know, that he just gets hurt again. And mm-hmm. um, and that kind of becomes, I mean, he missed five games in 2022 and missed almost the whole season last year. So uh, he's not the biggest guy. He's not the most durable guy. And I think the, the concern there, the worst case scenario, is that he misses a good chunk uh, of the season. I think another part of the worst case scenario, and I, I brought it up on the positive side because I think it can be a positive Curious about the interactions between CJ Gardner Johnson, Vic Fangio. Okay. Old school coach. Old school coach. Um, New school player. Henri at times, which is, I, I like that in a, I like a, an old Henri defensive coordinator. I think that's fun. 
wonder about the dynamic there. They could, I mean, he could end up loving CJ because yeah. he does play with such passion. Yeah. I could see him really liking him, but I'll be, I'll be keeping an eye on that. Yeah. Something to, something to watch. Okay. Um, how about Devin white? We talked about him a little bit earlier. Best case scenario. Well, this guy was a, a pro bowler three years ago. So I, I Look, I think that's probably a lot. To, I'm not going to go that high, but mm-hmm. I think the best case scenario is that he comes in and he and he gives you 17 games of really solid uh, production, uh, gets you some sacks. Um, yeah, I, I'm not sure the expectation can be very high as far as coverage goes, but um, I'll say that he doesn't blow too many coverages. <laughs> um, but just that he comes in and he and he's he's solid and he and he doesn't you know, that, that he's closer to the player he was a few years ago than he was last year. Um, and I think there's a fair chance of that happening. I think for me, it's going to come down to big plays because I, look, I, 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 I just think he's going to mess some things up at times because he does play with that kind of aggression. You're willing to take some of that if he makes big plays. So I, I think you want to see that from him. I think that will be a part of the best case scenario. Who's the ultimate guy that that did that? That gave up plays, but overcame it or made up for it by by making so many plays on defense, or like linebacker, or any position, any position on defense. That doesn't really, I think, on offense lend itself to. Um, I got an eagle in mind who whose whole career was was that. A little bit of Jalen Mills. A little bit. A little I'll bit. Leo Shepard. Oh, that's a better one. Yeah. Was Lito? I mean, he would jump every route. He would try to make a big play on every, even if like it didn't matter if it was like third and twenty, and all you you know you knock the ball down and force him. He would just be going for it, and uh, you know he made some unbelievable, spectacular plays. The only player in history with two hundred yard interception returns against the same team, Cowboys. Uh, but yeah, he would he would give up a few plays too. But, I was trying to come up with a linebacker there, and I didn't didn't get one. Yeah, I'm going to think about that. I mean, they really haven't had many linebackers who did make plays. Yeah, so, you know, maybe um, maybe Nigel Bradham. Hmm. Keith Adams. I think Nigel was just pretty solid. Jamar Chaney. Where were the good ones? Um, I'm still... Sorry, I like Jamar. Like Keith Jordan. Yeah. All right. Uh, what's the worst case scenario with Devin White? That That he's the player he was last year. And, and he's got you pulling your hair out by week five. Yeah. Which, you know, and I think either scenario is possible. I think the latter scenario is probably a little more likely. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it has the potential um, to really to really blow up in their faces. But uh, also has the potential to be – and, like, really, it's like a lot of these free agents that they brought in. There, there are wide potential variances in, in the result. Yeah, I agree with that. I, I think like a lot of these moves could go either way, which is why this is kind of fun. Yeah. Are you having fun? No. <laughs> okay. How about I'm having a blast here? How about Zach Bond? Oh, I don't know. I think best case is you have him and you, you figure out what his role is in yeah. this defense. And he has that role and he's a spot rusher yeah. and he gives you a couple sacks. Yeah, that's probably the best case scenario. And he plays special teams. Best case scenario is he's a he's a really good special teamer. I, I can't see him playing more than a handful of snaps on defense. Maybe just situationally, like five to seven snaps a game, maybe, um, and, and gives you a little a little pressure. But I, I just don't see the upside being much better than that. How about worst case? They just don't find a, a role for him on defense. Form. He just doesn't play on defense. But he plays special teams. I think there's a, a floor there for what they got him in here for. Yeah, and he – I mean, special teamers usually are pretty – like, if you're good at it, you don't kind of mm-hmm. go up and down. So, uh, that's fair. How about Matt Hennessy? Matt Hennessy – And um, we'll we'll call it best-case scenario if he's asked to play because the best-case scenario is he, he might not play, right? Yeah, but, I mean, I think the best-case scenario is he wins the starting center job. I don't think that's the best case scenario. Well, maybe not for the Eagles, but for him it is. Okay. I mean, yeah. for Eagles, the Eagles, that's not the best case scenario. That's absolutely right. Um, but I mean, for him, maybe the right guard spot. 
Yeah. The best of both he, worlds, maybe. He played right guard, but he did say in, in his presser the other day, I don't know when it was, Monday? Last week? It was last week. Doesn't matter. Yeah, you're right. Um, <laughs> he said he could play all three interior positions. He's never played right guard in the league. Um, but, yeah, I th- that's probably the most likely scenario mm-hmm. um, to be a best-case scenario is that he's a starting right guard. Um, that's fair. Yeah. Uh, the worst case is, look, we I know we said the injury thing, but he has an injury from last year. So if he's not – even even if he's healthy, but he's not maybe the same. He was a pretty good athlete. If he's not that same explosive athlete, and he's not what he used to be, I think that would be bad. Um, Missed all the last year. He said he's healthy, hundred percent for for OTAs. And I guess the other side of that is, you you could end up like, you know, oh, I can't believe we got rid of Sua. You know, this, he could be mm-hmm. worse than Sua. You could be regretting that. Um, I don't think that's super likely. Um, but, um, yeah, I mean, I think he's a potential starter on the upside. Okay. How about Devontae Parker? Interesting. Best case, it's 2019 again. <laughs> um, no, I think the, the best case scenario is that he contributes as a three. I think that's the best case scenario. That he's a three. And he's an upgrade from the guys last year. And he's an upgrade from the guys last year. And he catches you, you know, 40 balls for 550 yards and four touchdowns. Worst case, doesn't make the team? Doesn't make the team. Yeah. Uh, the more likely. I don't know. 40 is a lot. <laughs> it is a lot. You know, it's interesting. Like, he's never been in this position where, I mean, he's always – because when you're when you're a first-round pick – when you're a fairly high first round pick, the expect you're expected to be a starter and he's been a starter every year of his career. And he's been a disappointing one, but now he's not going to be a starter. Most likely, even if they're in three wides, I'm guessing there'll be somebody else who'd be the third one. Um, so the expectations are lower. He's going to be facing, he's not going to be facing teams, best corners, which I'm not sure how much of that happened lately anyway, but uh, it's a different situation for him, so maybe he'll respond to that. Maybe it'll be, you know, not not being the guy will be good for him, and, and the production will be there. Yeah, just because I think he will make the team, I'm going to say more likely that he's a good number three, but I'm, I'm not real confident in that. Yeah, nor I. Uh, we only have two more here. Kenny Pickett, best case, and this is if he has to play. <laughs> Because the best case is we never talk about Kenny Pickett after this day. Right, right. Um, Yeah, I think the best case scenario is if he does play is that uh, he's able to manage the game until Jalen gets back and not make mistakes. Um, He's not going to put up big numbers. He really never has. He averaged like 179 yards per game or something. He's only got – He's got 13 career touchdowns and 25 starts or 24 starts or something. The touchdown numbers are astoundingly low. Astonishingly low. Um, And the interception numbers are low, too. So, um, you know, you just got to hope that if he has to play, he doesn't mess things up. Worst case? That he messes things up. And he loses games. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Oren Burks. Oren Burks. Best case scenario, I guess the best case scenario is that he's a starter. I mean, well, for for him, that'd be the best case. For the team, that's not the best case. No, um, I guess the best case scenario is that he doesn't have to play in the Super Bowl. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I guess they again, if they can find a role for him on on defense, um, a competent rotational player, backup type. Yeah, I just. I have my doubts, but that would be the best case scenario that he's. It's rare that a guy plays in the Super Bowl and hurts his perception as much as, <laughs> like, if, if he didn't play in the Super Bowl, I think people would be a lot more excited about this. Yeah. He was in the. Quest didn't help himself. Yeah. True. Uh, worst case. Always comes back to Quest. Doesn't make the team? Yeah, I think that's the worst case. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That was fun. Yeah. I did. Yeah, anything- you got anything else to to say before we wrap this up? No, you, you know I do. I enjoy meeting these guys and talking to them and getting mm-hmm. a sense of their personality and who they are and where they where they're at and what their mindset is. And I, 
yeah, we have, I guess we have all the videos um, on our site. So check them out. They're, they're fun to watch. Yeah. All right. If you enjoy the Eagle Eye podcast, please do us a favor, rate and subscribe wherever you get your pods. If you're watching on YouTube, please click that like button, subscribe there as well. That's it. We're back to our normal schedule. We'll have one for you on Thursday, as long as no news happens. For Rube, I'm Dave. This has been Eagle Eye, presented by Nissan. We'll talk to you soon.